Welcome back to my channel Physics Form 4 KSSM. We continue Chapter 2 Force and Motion 1 on Topic 2.6 Force. In this video, I will discuss two learning standards. The first one, define force as the rate of change of momentum. The second one is solve problems involving F equals MA. What is force? I think you have discussed this part before, the meaning of force. A force is simply a push or a pull. The action of push or pull meaning you are exerting force to an object. All forces have both size and direction or magnitude and direction. Because you have discussed in chapter 1, force is one example of vector quantity. A force can change the state of motion of an object. How does a force change the momentum of an object in motion along a straight line? We have just discussed earlier about momentum as a product of mass and velocity. So how can the force applied change momentum of an object? So we discuss more on this topic. This is a car that moving at certain velocity. What makes an object change velocity? Example, if you are driving a car at certain velocity, if you want to change the velocity, for example, to increase the velocity or to decrease velocity, you need to apply force. If you want to slow down the motion of the car, you need to step on the brake pedal, meaning applying force on the brake pedal. If you want to increase the velocity of the car, you need to step on the oil brake. Okay, meaning there must be force applied in order to change velocity of an object. So forces can cause a change in velocity. If there is change in velocity, of course, there will be change in momentum. As we discussed before, momentum is a product of mass and velocity. For constant mass, momentum is depends on velocity. So if there is change in velocity, there will be change in momentum. In the lab, if you want to measure force, you can use a spring balance. I hope you still remember the unit used for force is Newton. The size of force is measured in Newtons. You can measure the size of force with a force meter or a spring balance. For example, you can measure force or weight of the of block A by hanging a the object to the spring balance. So the reading here shows 4 Newton. Okay, so we can measure force. Either it's a pulling force by using the spring balance. Remember, the unit for force is Newton. You can refer to your textbook, Activity 2.13. So part A, we want to investigate relationship between force and acceleration with a fix of mass. Instruction, look at the diagram here. How the apparatus uh, was arranged. You can see this is a ticker timer. This is a trolley. And we put a ticker tape here. Okay. So we use alternating power supply. I hope you still remember we have discussed about the use of ticker timer to study motion. So switch on the ticker timer, pull the trolley down the runway with one elastic string. So this elastic string represents force. So pull down the trolley with an elastic or one elastic string. So they represent one unit of force. What is this friction compensated runway? 
Friction compacted runaway means the friction of the runaway is already balanced by component or weight of the trolley. Okay, so what we do next, we get a ticker tape with dots. Huh? So what we do, calculate and record the acceleration of the trolley using the ticker tape obtained. Next, repeat step 2 and 3 or step 1 and 2 using two elastic strings and then three elastic strings with each of the strings stretched to the same length as that of the first elastic string in step 1. For example, if you pull the string to 6 cm at first, meaning when you repeat the step by using two elastic strings or three elastic strings, you need to pull the string to the same length. Okay? So what we do next, we can record all the readings eh, or the calculation value for the initial velocity and the final velocity. Then we can calculate the acceleration for each of the case here. So based on the result that you get, you can plot a graph of acceleration against F. Remember, F is represented by number of elastic string. As we already discussed here, one string represents one unit of force. Okay? So you plot a graph, you will get this graph. A straight line passed through the origin. What we can say about this graph? What is the relationship between A and F? From here, acceleration is directly proportional to F. So this is the result of this activity. So you can carry out this activity in the lab. Part B, to investigate the relationship between mass and acceleration at a constant force. For part A, the mass is constant. Relationship between acceleration and force. Now for the second part here, force is constant. We want to relate between mass and acceleration. So instruction, switch on the ticker timer, pull down the trolley with two elastic string that represent two units of force as shown here. Repeat step 1 using two trolleys and three trolleys. So at first we can use one trolley but pull by two elastic string. Then we repeat by using two trolley, still pulling by two elastic strings. Okay, so meaning we make it this uh, force supply constant. Okay, so we can attach a ticker tape. Okay, that pass through the ticker timer. So once you on uh, the ticker timer and you pull the trolley down the runaway, you can get a piece of ticker tape with dots. So from the ticker tapes, you can calculate for initial velocity, final velocity, and acceleration. So from here, we can see mass eh, represented by number of trolley. So we can uh, assume that one trolley is one unit of mass. Okay. So two trolley means two unit of mass. Three trolley, three unit of mass. Okay. And then from the result, we can plot a graph of A against 1 over M. You can plot a graph of A against M also. Okay. So for to calculate this 1 over M, to so just use this value, 1 over M. Okay. So you can use a trolley, for example, different masses. Huh? For example, maybe the first one is 1 kg, 2 kg, 3 kg, or First one, 500 gram, 1,000 gram, 1 1.5 uh, kg, kg trolley. Okay, so you can use a diff, uh, three different values of masses. So you can plot the graph A against 1 over M.
So we get this result. If you plot a graph of A against M, you get a curved graph. Okay? So we want to get a straight line graph so that later we can produce formula. That's why we plot a graph of A against 1 over M. So from here, we can uh, write down the relationship A directly proportional to 1 over M. F is constant. So from here, we can write down the relationship acceleration is inversely proportional to mass of an object. So from the result of the experiment A and B, the first one we get acceleration is directly proportional to applied force when mass is constant. The second one acceleration is inversely proportional to mass of an object when force is constant. Combining these two results, we get A directly proportional to F divided by M. So from this relationship, we can write down F directly proportional to MA. So from this relationship, we can produce formula. The formula for acceleration equals to V minus U divided by P. You can substitute the value of A here as V minus U divided by T. Thus, we get F directly proportional to MV minus MU divided by T. MV minus MU is change in momentum. MV is final momentum. MU is initial momentum. Change in momentum divided by time, we also call it as rate of change of momentum so actually force directly proportional to rate of change of momentum this one represent newton's second law of motion so actually this expression represent newton's second law of motion so how to produce formula from this relationship Newton's second law of motion states that rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to force and x in direction of applied force from relationship F directly proportional to MA. So the symbol directly proportional, if you change to equal sign, you must put one constant here. So equals F equals KMA where k is a constant. So what is the value of k? The value of k can be determined throughout the experiment or the activity that we, uh, we carried out earlier. So 1 newton is equals to k times 1 kg times 1 meter second to the power negative 2. For example, for mass of trolley 1 kilogram, if you apply force of 1 newton, it will move down the runaway at acceleration 1 meter second to the power negative 2. So you just substitute the value of F, value of M and value of A. Thus we get K equals to 1. So this is the value that determined from the experiment. Therefore, we can write down the formula for the Newton's second law of motion as F equals to MA. Or we also can write as F equals MV minus MU divided by T. Okay, so this is actually represent formula for Newton's second law of motion. Okay, so we also can write, can uh, state as force equals to rate of change of momentum. So let's look at some example eh, on problem solving by using this formula F equals to MA. Example 1, 
a worker pulls a load of mass 80 kg along a horizontal surface by force of 160 N. If the surface is smooth and without any resistance that opposes the motion of the object, what is acceleration of the load? Okay, from the example here, you can list out all the information given. Mass M equals to 80 kg, force F 160 N. So we apply formula F equals to MA. Okay. So in this case, there's only one force act eh, because the surface is smooth, eh, no friction. Okay. So force is 160, mass is 80. Thus, we can determine A equals to 2 meter second to the power negative. Example 2, a car of mass 1,200 kg moves its velocity of 30 m per second. When the brakes of the car are applied, the car stops in 5 seconds. Calculate average braking force of the car. Okay. Now, uh, from this example, the value of acceleration is not given. So you need to determine the value of acceleration first. So A equals my V minus U divided by T. Final velocity equals to zero because the car stopped eh? okay, after five seconds. Okay, initial velocity equals to 30. Okay, so zero minus 30 divided by five. So we get negative value, eh? negative six meter second to the power negative 2 because this case is deceleration okay or acceleration in opposite direction so average braking force equals to f equals me so we get m 1200 multiply acceleration negative 6 so we get negative 7200 newton so the negative sign shows that the force act in opposite direction to the motion of the car. For example, if the car moving to the right, the braking force is must act to the left eh, to slow down the car. That's all. I will continue in my next video for practice 2.6. Bye.